What do you see? A rough slab of wood? Here, let me sand it down and varnish it. There, that's better. At first glance, this is a cross-section of a century-old maple tree. But I'll tell you what I see. A story. That's right. Every ring of this tree has a story to tell. Don't believe me? Well, allow me a few minutes of your time, and I'll prove it to you. Because you aren't just looking at a maple tree. You're looking at a map of history. This century maple was a magnificent tree, but unfortunately it began to die, and so it was cut down by the hydro company. I obtained this cross-section and I began the tedious process of uncovering its story. Here's how I did it. Each ring represents exactly one year of growth, The wood is lightest at the beginning of the ring. That's because you're looking at its springtime growth. And in the springtime, the tree grows the fastest, and so the wood appears lighter. The second half of the ring is slightly darker, which is the tree's mid to late summer growth. During this time, the tree starts to slow down in growth, and the wood becomes denser, which is why it looks darker. Then finally, the tree stops growing altogether in the fall, which is represented by the line at the end of the ring. The sap descends into the roots, the leaves fall off, and the tree remains dormant throughout the winter until spring returns, and a new ring begins. Just by looking at the rings, we can see what years were good for growing, and also the years that were plagued with drought. We can also see when the tree sustained different types of injuries. But that's not the story I'm talking about. I know this tree was cut down in the spring of 2012, and so if I carefully count backward, I can actually figure out exactly what year this tree was born, so to speak. In addition to knowing the tree's exact age, I will also be able to accurately tell what year each ring represents. My wife and I, magnifying glass in hand, painstakingly counted the rings on our own. Then we compared our results and confirmed that we had labeled every ring with its proper year. We discovered that this tree lived to the ripe old age of 119. But what amazed us even more was to discover the events that this tree had lived through and in a way had silently borne witness to. And here is where it all began. The first year that this tree took root was in 1893, which is also the very same year that New Zealand was the first country in history to allow women to vote. And when this tree was only two years old, the Lumiere brothers introduced motion pictures to the world in 1895. This is also the same year that the first radio signals ever were transmitted. When this tree was three years old, the first Olympics were held since ancient times. This is the year 1901, where the world's first transatlantic telegraph was sent. This is also the same year that Australia became an independent nation. This tree was still just a sapling when in 1903 the Wright brothers flew for the very first time in history. Their airplane flew 20 feet high for a distance of 120 feet. Their flight lasted only 12 seconds, but it was the beginning of an incredible era in aviation. Which leads me to tell you what amazed me the most about the lifetime of this tree. Notice how the Wright brothers' achievement is recorded in red. That's because anything having to do with the history of flight is recorded in the same color. So let's skip ahead to 1919, which is the year of the very first non-stop transatlantic flight. This was an amazing feat, considering that only 16 years prior to this, the Wright brothers only managed to fly their plane 120 feet. But now, airplanes were capable of spanning the entire length of the Atlantic Ocean. Moving on now, 1947 was the year that the sound barrier was broken, another great milestone in human flight. Here is 1957, the year that the first satellite, known as Sputnik, broke through the Earth's atmosphere and into outer space. Here is 1961, which saw the very first human in outer space. And only eight years later, in 1969, we put a man on the moon. I find this incredible. For millennia upon millennia, 
humanity has dreamed of achieving flight but was unable to accomplish it. That is, until 1903, when we finally achieved flight for 12 seconds, and since that day, developments in aviation and technology have increased exponentially. It took humanity thousands upon thousands of years to fly, but there are only 66 years between the Wright brothers and the first man on the moon. That means it would be entirely possible for one person to witness all of these things within their lifetime. Now that is cool. Jumping back to the year 1905 now, which is when Einstein announced his theory of relativity. And only a few years later, in 1908, was when the North Pole was reached for the first time, and the South Pole in 1911. One year later, the Titanic sank in 1912. Here is when World War I began in 1914. And in the next year, 1915, the first phone call ever was made. 1918 was when the First World War ended. Here is when the first Winter Olympics were held in 1924. And here is the Great Depression of 1929. And here is when the China floods happened which goes down in history as the world's worst natural disaster. Up to four million people tragically perished in the China floods of 1931. 1937 is the year of the Great Hindenburg Blimp Disaster. World War II began in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland. This is 1941, the year of the attack on Pearl Harbor, which set into motion the events of 1945. This is when the first atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, followed by Nagasaki. World War II ended the very same year. Here is when Israel was recognized by the UN as its own nation in 1948. This is 1953, when the first person ever reached the summit of Mount Everest. Here is the year 1957, when the famous Canadian fighter jet, known as the Avro Arrow, was introduced. It was a marvel of modern technology, and it was known to be decades ahead of its time. As a matter of fact, when the Avro Arrow is compared with the modern-day F-35, the Arrow flies twice as fast and 20,000 feet higher. It is also more fuel-efficient to boot. Not bad for something that was made back in the 50s. Sadly, the Avro Arrow was scrapped only two years after it was introduced, due to political pressure. Here is when JFK was assassinated in 1963 which is also the same year that Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. Ten years later, in 1973, the world's first cell phone call was made. Over here, in 1986, was when the explosion happened at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the effects of which are still being felt to this day. 1989 was a great year, because that is when the Berlin Wall fell. Two years later, in 1991, the internet was made public. In 1997, Princess Diana's life was tragically cut short. Here, in 2001, is when the 9-11 attacks took place. And finally, in 2010, the world's tallest man-made structure opened in Dubai, known as the Burj Khalifa. It stands at 828 meters tall. Reflecting on the lifetime of this tree, it's hard to believe that all of these things happened in just over a century. We can only imagine what's going to happen in the next.